research library has been part of the American Museum of Natural History since its founding in 1869. In fact, the first books entered the collection when the museum was still housed at the Central Park Armory prior to 1877. Natural histories came about because we wanted to let people outside of the museum know about the rich rare book collection contained here. The rare book collection is comprised of over 14,000 volumes used by researchers from all around the world. Many unique or unusual or hard to find volumes can only be found here. Natural Histories contains 40 essays written by one of the museum's curators, librarians, or scientific associates based on 40 works contained in the museum's rare book collection. And each essay is accompanied by multiple illustrations from that work. In figuring out which works to include, we wanted examples that weren't incredibly widely known. We wanted to find some hidden gems within the collection. We also wanted to cover all of the scientific disciplines um, studied at the museum. So the works uh, contained in this volume begin in the 16th century and continue up to the early 20th century. In the days before photography and other forms of documentation developed, original art was the only way to capture the likeness of organisms, people, or places, and therefore was the only way to transmit or share this information. So a natural history illustration would enable someone who'd never seen an elephant to try to begin to understand what an elephant looked like and, and how its unusual features might function. You might wonder why modern scientists would need to look at an old book. What are they looking for? In a lot of cases, they're looking for an early description or the first description of a specific species. In some cases, the species described in some of these volumes are extinct. So the only way um, scientists can see these species is to take a look at one of these volumes and examine the illustrations. In the earliest days of scientific illustration, many of the illustrators had never even seen the object of their work. It was described to them. That could work, um, but it also might not. This is one of the volumes from Conrad Gessner's Historia Animalium from the 16th century. You can see woodcut illustrations of some animals that would have been hardly known to readers in Europe in the 16th century. Here's a fairly good depiction of a walrus, recognizable as a walrus because of his large front teeth but he also seems to have an additional fin behind his forelegs. So it's not the best, but it tells us something uh, about what animals were being discovered at this time. This is Hooke's Micrographia from 1667. Micrographia consists of 60 essays by Hook um, and many spectacular illustrations. The illustrations depict common objects and animals, but seen through a microscopic view. This was the first time many people had seen any of these familiar objects through a microscope. They were able to see such things as the head of a fly, spores of mold on a piece of bread, even crystals in the author's own frozen urine. Imagine their horror upon seeing this microscopic view of a louse clinging to a single hair. Maria Sibylla Marian was the well-known 18th century artist who took the unusual step at the time as a woman of traveling to Dutch Suriname to collect and illustrate insects, their life cycles, and the plants they live on. The fanciful frontispiece depicts Marian attended by a troop of cherubs who are assisting her in her collection of plants and insect specimens. As we start to digitize our collection, versions that are available online are excellent at conveying the content, but one really has to view the volume in person to appreciate the illustration that went into creating these fantastic works.